Hello. In this episode, Mark and I are at Golden Gardens Park beachfront in Seattle, Washington. So behind us is Puget Sound, and this is the lower level of Golden Gardens Park on the beach. And in this little episode, Mark is going to talk about translating English sentences that are not in uh, that are not standard form categorical statements into standard form categorical statements. So as just a background to what Mark's going to say, remember that a, a standard form categorical statement starts with either all or else with some, and a variation on all is no, but it says that either all or some or none of a group of things, of a specified group of things, either belong to or don't belong to a specified group of things. So the predicate term in a standard form categorical statement will always be the name of a group of things. The subject term will always be the name of a group of things. And it'll start with either a universal quantifier saying that either all of the group or none of the group. And then it will continue and it will say that either those individuals belong to or don't belong to the specified predicate group. So with that, Mark is going to talk about translating sentences that aren't in standard form into standard form categorical statements. And I think I'm going to stand here in case it blows over. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we've got, again, we've got four different standard form statements. All S or P, no S or P, some S or P, some S or not P. And the reason we want to get these statements, and Aristotle thought most statements in a in an ordinary language could be translated into one of these four forms. The reason we want to get them into four forms is once we do that, we can have techniques that can really handle arguments much more easily. So there's a lot of advantage to actually doing a little bit of work of translating them into these standard forms. So like this first one, dogs or mammals. It's not quite in standard form because it doesn't have a quantifier. And it's pretty clear, given you know, what context you would have, the dogs or mammals means all dogs are mammals. So I would restate this or rewrite it, all dogs are mammals. And we'll notice dogs as a subject term and mammals as a predicate term is a, a, a group word. It's a plural noun referring to a group of things. And we've got the copula, are. There's really technically only two proper copulae, are and are not. This would be a standard form of an A, of an a statement, a universal affirmative statement. Number two here, most cats are pets. It's not quite standard form either. It's not making a claim about all cats or no cats. It's a particular statement. And maybe the translation isn't perfect. There might be some subtle difference, but the closest we're going to get is some. So I would translate this, and you can allow me a bit of abbreviation here. Some cats are pets. Cats is a subject term. Pets is a predicate term are perfectly fine terms. They're plural nouns. So now this would be proper form for a categorical statement. Roses are pretty, number three. Couple things going on here. We don't have a quantifier again. And I think probably the best uh, interpretation would be all roses are pretty. But the thing is, pretty is not a predicate term. It's a word that describes things, an adjective, like tall or short, um, small, big. Uh, you, we want an actual noun. So we can usually use the word things, pretty things in this case. The word things doesn't add any content, any substantive content to the claim. So we could say all roses do a little bit of abbreviation here. All roses are pretty things. The, word, the phrase pretty things is a predicate term. It uh, picks out a class of things. It's a group noun. A term doesn't have to have just one word in it. It could have a number of words. Pretty things that stink would be a, a predicate term also. Uh, but that you know, things that stink would be adding, adding content here. We don't want to do that. Number four, all dogs are not fish. It almost looks good because are not works as a copula. All works as a subject or as a quantifier. But we don't have anything that says all blank are not blank. But I think what we can understand this is saying is no dogs are fish. And that would fit the pattern nicely. No D R F. No dogs are fish. One qua um, quantifier, a subject term, dogs. R is the copula. F for fish. So all these... Um, 
translations would be logically equivalent to the original, but they're in a pattern now, um, a categorical statement pattern that will allow us to work with techniques that are going to make our lives a whole lot easier. Did you want to say anything Very about good. Paul? Well, I'll just comment that if you think about it, when, when we say all dogs are not fish, there's two things we could mean by that. We could mean it's not the case that all dogs are fish. If you think about it, that's one interpretation of it. Another interpretation would be no dogs are fish. Every dog is not a fish. So I, th I think this sentence as it's written is a little bit ambiguous, but it, it's pretty clearly meaning no dogs are fish. I think that would be the obvious interpretation. So that's why in categorical logic we translate all S are not P as no S or P, as you did here. That's fine. And just keep in mind that we have an adjective here. Mark changed it so that it's the name of a category of things. The predicate term has to be the name of a category of things. So uh, I don't have any other sure. comments. Very good. Let's go. Okay, thank you.